We've seen uh, markets decline today. Oil is up. We'll talk more of that shortly. But firstly, let's get the latest uh, earnings numbers, and particularly from JP Morgan today. The earnings numbers don't seem to be too bad, but the markets didn't like it, and the stock is down. Yeah, and that's been the theme here uh, with this this market in terms of as we kick off earnings season, there's just high expectations for for U.S. companies, and uh, perhaps more so now than than you know ever. It's because we're seeing this period of high inflation. The only way you keep the stock market continuing to go up with high inflation is if earnings can kind of back the uh, the valuations that these companies are at. Um, as you mentioned, J.P. Morgan uh, led the led the earnings season here. The numbers, as you mentioned, were a beat on the top and bottom line. But the concern that the market had, and this just shows you how um, con uh, concerned uh, overall this market is about how, how important earnings is, they missed on some expectations for interest income this year, and uh, th there almost feels like you know you can you can hit top and lot bottom lines great, um, but what matters more is that that you have just a clean slate and everywhere else. That being said, clearly the market didn't love what they got out of J.P. Morgan, down about five percent here at the time of recording this video uh, or this podcast. The issue here with this is that. With um, JP Morgan down to start out earnings season, uh, and this week we just had uh, hot inflation data out of the United States. You know, CPI was higher than expected. Although the producer price index followed it and it was a little bit cooler, the overall story still seems like inflation data is coming in strong, it's coming in hot, and uh, that could push back expectations for rate cuts. So as I mentioned, the only way you keep stocks elevated in that environment is if geopolitics don't ramp up, which we'll get to in just a second. And at the same time, um, earnings come in very solid. They, there's some extremely high expectations. That being said, the dollar index is just shy. It just traded at 106, which is uh, a recent high, last several uh, several months here. That's a, that's a high on the day. And that comes as we see essentially central banks around the world um, looking to position themselves to, to begin cutting this year. Meanwhile, it's in question as to whether or not the Federal Reserve uh, will cut it all, right? Some people would say they're not going to cut. Other people would say if they are, it's going to be more closer to two interest rate cuts. Whereas when we started the year, Johnny, it was the idea was six, right? There's a big change in that uh, that expectation. So again, that dialing back of rate cuts is causing the dollar index to look really strong against its peers. If you take a look at the euro against the dollar here, I know a lot of our listeners are currency traders or currency investors. What you can see here is that we're taking out lows that we haven't taken out in some time. We're trading at 1.065. That's a fresh low for the euro going back uh, since November of last year. So euro's coming down. Uh, the pound against the US dollar also looking relatively weak and uh, taking out fresh lows again there as well. Now, again, with uh, any any um, expectations for rate cuts uh, to be to be coming into the picture for the US, we need to see inflation data coming down and the economy not be so hot. The issue is that we're not quite seeing that. That being said, if you're somebody who tracks rates like interest uh, yields, right, on like a 10 year uh, note or 20 year plus bonds, you can't help but to notice today that yields are down pretty hard. You got 1.66% down on the 10 year yield today, and uh, that is noticeable. One of the reasons for that, Johnny, uh, is, is arguably the same reason why we see oil up, gold up, dollar up, um, and stocks down. There's a little bit of a risk off sentiment, perhaps something going on in the Middle East. Is that right? Yeah, uh, and things could get a lot worse. Hopefully they won't, but um, if there was some if there was going to be some sort of response from Iran and then consequently from Israel, it's going to be a, a very difficult time for, for everyone, particularly those on the ground, but also economic markets across the world uh, will go into some sort of shock phase should things get out of hand. We have to think about too, Johnny, that the last time 
uh, we saw serious uh, escalation in global conflict with Russia and Ukraine. Think about what that did to the world. I mean, what we saw was price rises everywhere. It was incredibly painful for the whole world. I mean, it still is. There's still uh, mounting uh, pain from both the conflict in the Middle East as well as uh, in Eastern Europe. If you enjoyed this video from the Market Insights Market Pulse podcast, you can listen to the full episode by clicking the link down below in the description. You can find us on your favorite podcasting apps. And again, we post several times a week. So if you're looking for market updates throughout the week, this is the place to be, whether you're in the, in the car on the way to work or something like that, make sure to tune in to get the latest. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.